I Hi. think we're live. Oh, hey, Amy. Hi, everybody. Hi, yes. everybody. Welcome to the classroom. Welcome. <laughs> I am Amy Carrier, if you don't know that, and I'm here with Julia Neiman from California. And Julia and I are going to have a conversation today for my classroom about what's the topic that everybody knows I like talking about and teaching about. So we are talking about entre entrepreneurship and how Amy Carrier's classroom is in alignment with so many of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah. I think is really important because so many people don't even know that those goals exist. They don't. So that's why, Julia, you and I are chatting about this today. Um, so thank you everyone who's here with us today and who's joining us. We're going to give it a few minutes to let you all come in and I see that we've got some people coming in and I'm looking for comments. Please say hello, tell us you're here, write hello, wave, say hi. I want to know where you are in the world because I promise you need to be an entrepreneur. If it's something that you've thought about it's in you. It's a seed that's been planted and you need to follow that intuition, that drive to build something that doesn't exist, whether it's for something outside of yourself because you see a problem you can solve or you know that the gifts and talents you have can actually be offered to other people through the form of consulting, coaching, advising, building a nonprofit, anything like that because we need to do a better job of running this world. There's so many issues. It's up to all of us. And I'm talking about you and me and Julia. It's up to all of us to solve those problems. You can't wait for anybody else to do it, right, Julia? That's right. No, yeah. that's absolutely right. It's, it's on all of us. There's a word I love, it's incumbent on all of us. It means we have to take responsibility right. Yes. For the world around us. Right. And what kind of world that we choose to live in. Exactly. And so Julia and I are going to talk about, I'm putting it up on the screen, screen for you. Julia and I are going to talk about entrepreneurship and the SDGs. Those are the Sustainable Development Goals. So if you don't know what the UN Sustainable Development Goals are, hang out with us for a little bit. Um, and we're going to talk to you about what they are. There are 18 of them. 18, right, Julia? 17, I think. 17, 17. That's right. There's 17 of these goals, and they it's, it's the UN looking at the whole world saying we need to fix uh, hunger. We need to fix health care. We need to fix innovation, we need to clean our waters. All of these things are the 17 core things that need to be fixed on the planet. That's right. So that's what Julie and I are gonna talk about today. And we want to take your questions about this. We are not experts, but Julia actually had the idea for this conversation and I really appreciate it. And that is that our classroom, Amy Carrier's classroom, which exists merely because people like Julia, <laughs> way, this lady on this side of me, I always do that wrong, it's the mirror effect. No, it is, um, I do that too. <laughs> Julia and 13 other, 12 other mentor teachers who just volunteer their time to teach what they know, what they do in their day-to-day -day life, what they get paid for, what they're experts in doing. And if you don't yet know Julia, Julia teaches youth entrepreneurship every Tuesday in our classroom. And today we're going to connect those dots with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And like I said, if you don't know what they are, stay tuned and ask us questions, okay? I'm going to be reading the comments during this entire thing. There's no set presentation that we're going to give you. Yes, we're just having a conversation here today. Yes. So, Julia, um, do you want to talk a little bit about what the SDGs are and why you have you had this thought that we need to talk about how the classroom is addressing them? 
Yeah, we, we are. And the funny thing is, Amy, when I thought about it, it's not anything we thought to sit down consciously and say, we need to address these goals. You know, <laughs> they just kind of happen naturally. Right. Because that's really entrepreneurship education encompasses all of these goals. And I have a really good example, like with the ocean. We don't <laughs> talk about the ocean in the classroom or teach people how to start businesses related to the ocean. But yeah. I have a, a friend who is, he's a very dear friend. He's an entrepreneur. He, um, he was actually my first business coach. And then he went, um, he started a, a, a coaching business to teach people how to do joint ventures. And his love is the ocean. He loves to paddleboard. So uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And he, and he lives on the beach in Laguna here in California. And he started um, a nonprofit for the ocean. Yeah. And and now a couple of years later, he's doing a seven-part documentary series. Really? Featuring, yeah. This is, featuring this is the guy I, I you can yeah. me with, right? It, yeah, Rich. Yeah. And okay, and cool. he um yeah he's doing a seven-part documentary on people that are caring for the ocean and coming up with innovative ideas That's to amazing. address the issues. But he came to that from being an entrepreneur yeah and being an entrepreneur having those skills allowed him to build a successful business right. which allows him now to live his passion yeah and his passion is he's going to be featuring seven or eight different startups in, in these in this documentary and That's giving amazing. people an opportunity is that amazing all in support of when's the documentary goal? coming out julia uh i don't know he's just beginning the project okay so, I just want to say, a, uh, let me say a quick hello. We had, uh, last time I looked, we had well 42 people watching us. Wow. Rehan shared it. Uh, Rehan's daughter shared this. So hello, everybody. Thank you. Wow. So many comments. Let me just jump right to the people who are here and say thank awesome. you all for being here. Hi, Shakir. Uh, hi, Leila. Abdul Wahid Abbasi. Uh, Rehan is here. Awesome. Uh, Rehan says, oh, my God, so much change power on this video. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So and then um, uh, lots of people. Oh, my gosh. Rehan says, let me get you some eyeballs. <laughs> I don't oh, know. Yeah. Do I need to put my glasses on? It means he's going to share it. Oh, 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 thank you. Thank you for translating <laughs> Rehan, Julia. You clearly know him better than I do. Um, Zefran Chachi, how are you, my friend? Uh, Oladel Ibrahim Lanre, hello. Uh, Mohammed Qasim, how are you? My gosh, I'm so excited for Mohammed Qasim's live lessons on all things ecotourism, living with the earth, geology, because guess what? Mama Earth provides all of our food, all of our water, all of our oxygen. Without those three things, we can't be entrepreneurs. We can't take classes in Amy Carrier's classroom. That's so right. uh, I'm very excited for Qasem to begin. Um, so Saeed Inam uh, Badshah says, Amy, just guide me in a different way. That's what we're doing today, my friend. And if you can figure out ways that you personally can build something, some sort of solution to address the UN Sustainable Development Goals, you can talk about which goals your work is addressing within the work you're doing. So you can put on the website, This, these are the sustainable development goals that we're working on. So you, yeah, yeah. if you can think in that direction, people are going to pay attention to you, right, Julia? That's right. That's right. And if you just on Google uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals, you'll get some pages come up that will give you what all the goals are. I tried to post a link, but it wasn't working. The link wasn't working. It wasn't. No. Um, I actually have I have a slide of them. Let's see if I can pull it up. Uh, yeah, I posted one yesterday too. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, so, seventeen goals. The UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, I believe that our work addresses eight of them. And I'm actually going to hold up my, my slide to show you which eight. But what do you think, Julia? What are we addressing in Amy Carrier's classroom? Well, I, I have, uh, you came up with eight. I came up with six. So um, number one is no poverty. 
Yeah. So certainly you learn to become an entrepreneur. You make a decent living. You're no longer living in poverty. And you can hire your family and your friends and people from your community. You give them jobs. They have income. That gives them money to go into the community and spend it on things like food and 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 even entertainment and eating out and whatever. And so it makes the community stronger. I mean, that's the way I look at things. I like to look at things as interconnected. Yep. So everything that we do is connected to everything else. And I think when you look at the world in the, a bigger picture like that, then um, it makes it easier to see how you can play a part. Yeah. Because your tiny little part that you might play is so important to the big picture. Yeah, exactly. Right? And then my next one I identified was a goal number four, which is to provide a quality education mm-hmm. and continuing education and um, and work. Uh, oh, that's number eight. Wait a second. Okay, so quality education. So Can you start- what? What's the? I want to. I have my list in order. I, I miss. What did you start with? Oh, I started with one. One. With yep. No poverty. Yep. And then four. Four, which four. is quality mm-hmm. education. Mm -hmm. Uh, five which is gender equality oh interesting Uh, why do you think gender equality you teach women entrepreneurship they have money they become independent certainly how are we how are we differentiating because we're teaching everyone entrepreneurship yeah well we're not differentiating we're just we have men in the classroom we have women in the classroom so the women that pick up these skills and run with them create themselves to be more equal yeah Yeah. right yeah so yeah so and then number eight which is quality work and education and then indirectly i think i I have just for anybody who's watching if you're writing down what these goals are i have number eight is called decent work and economic growth that's that's what it's called so i guess it depends on which uh website you get it from right that was number I got here. I'll sh- I'll show you my number eight. My on, slide. On, on the UN page, the de- definition for goal number eight is promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, mm-hmm. full and productive employment, and decent work for all. Mm-hmm. Hey, Alex. He just said, "Hey." Hey, he said, hello, Alex. fantastic, fantastic people. And, you know, we need Alex to come back and teach more about yes. networking because a networking is yes. so important. And economic uh, growth. He's talking yeah. about the future of currency on the planet. Alex, yes. we Alex, need you. We need you to come back and start talking more about networking because this is so important. Because, Amy, when you think about it, part of how we how this really came to be for you and I both to be focused on these goals was by networking with people who are actually in our classroom right. who are consciously, intentionally working on these goals. You got it. Right? Yeah. So, so we, we still have, before you before we continue that list of, of uh, SDGs, we've got so many comments here. Let me just say hello to everybody. Um, Ola Dell says that this is an interesting discussion. Um, Kasim, our Kasim says yeah. this is a very important topic. Saeed Innam Badshah says, oh, I already read that one. Excuse me. Um, so Abdul Wahid Abbasi says, what are the plans to reduce unemployment? My friend, entrepreneurship, that's exactly what Julia okay. teaches about every Tuesday in the classroom. This is what we're talking okay. about today. So you don't have to be unemployed. If you cannot find a job in another company right now, you can create your own job, which is what we're talking about. So so Saeed continues to say, I am a marketing manager in a governmental organization, and I also love travel and to explore new things, but thanks for giving me a nice direction. Stick around, my friend. We're going to talk more. And I have a feeling Julia's going to pick up on this tomorrow when she teaches her class, right? Maybe? Well, actually, class tomorrow is part three of winning the inner game of wealth. Oh, that's right. Great. Yeah, All right. I got that series going. That's excellent. And if, for those of you who don't know, uh, our classroom assistant, uh, the one and only amazing Saman, 
is Yay. turning mm -hmm. these series that all the mentor teachers are doing, she's turning them into short videos so that you can see what's covered in the series and you can see links to every single one of the videos. So it's easy for you to go in and study. For example, Darren Strong, who teaches on Fridays, he's taught, I think, I don't know, someone, maybe you can put it in the comments. He's taught an eight class series on Facebook marketing for your business. It might be less than eight, I, I don't know. Um, but we are putting those together into these little mini classes that you can take on your own time. So make sure you look for those little teaser videos in the classroom and then listed below the video is every single one of those classes that you might have missed or that you will want to catch up on. Yeah. So Julia is doing number three in her series on mastering the game of inner wealth tomorrow at 3 p.m. New York time. Okay. And make sure you use a time zone converter to figure out when that is. There are so many amazing people here saying so many really cool things. Um, oh, guess who's here and wants to join us? Who? Can you, you can't hear him? Who? The little the little twenty year old fuzzball who lives with me is meowing outside oh. my office door. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Lisetta, hello. How are you? Uh, someone says the Facebook marketing series by Darren building your studio by Leland. So there's two and then the amazing interviews by Julia. So you have three series that will be launched for you to just take as a class and learn from all the experts. And Julia is really cool because she's, Julia is really cool for a lot of reasons, but she's oh, bringing in uh, amazing guest speakers as well. So, okay, let's get back to the SDGs. So we got through number one, which is no poverty. Number four is quality education. You well, said number five, which is gender equality. Okay. And I have the perfect story to go with that. So these Great. ladies, these ladies that lived in tri live in tribal Africa, right? They were so tired of being mistreated by the men in their tribe that they wanted to get away. And they started making their their local arts and crafts, like beaded jewelry and baskets and all the things. They got a representative to sell their products for them. They right. made enough money that they could. They left all the men in their village and started their own village. They started their own village? They started their own village, and they only let the men come so close to the village. They're not allowed in the circle. They That's just amazing. said, what Where? with you? Where is this? I don't remember what country, but it's in tribal Africa. I'll see if I can. I meant to look it up and I totally okay. forgot. If anybody it. has heard this story and knows where it is, please write it in the comments. I'm so curious about this. It's one of my favorite stories. That's great. I mean, they just said that was enough was enough. And they took it upon themselves to figure out how to become equal. Okay, cool. And they did. So that's why that one popped into my mind, because that's one of my favorite stories. That's a good story. Yes, gender equality. Well, let, me, let me say, let me say, it's a good story because it allowed the women to become independent. Right. But I firmly believe we need to empower women, but not at the expense of men. Right. No, I agree with you. But it was it, women need me. support, but men need to become allies. Yes. Go ahead, Julia. That's exactly right. So, and that's, that's what ha was happening. And these men were mistreating them. So they just said, okay, we're going to fix you. <laughs> and they did. But, but that was just why this uh, goal popped into my head, gender equality. So mm -hmm. when, and empowerment is exactly the right word. We need to empower not only women, but we need to em empower men because um, many of us live in countries where we don't have that kind of support. They try to keep us down. I mean, that's even in the United States, that's happening a lot when you go into these areas where they're low socioeconomic areas and people don't have a lot of resources and nobody is really supporting them with more resources. Well, there's data that's proven forever that women are paid less for the same job uh, as yeah. men. And you know what, that's, that's happening across the globe and it's now 
it's now being at least using Rehan's words, at least there are now eyeballs on this. Exactly. To talk about the fact that there's brilliance inside women that just hasn't been supported. And there are some countries in the world where it's illegal for women to speak and for women to work. So right. let's just all consciously support our sisters, whether you're a man or a woman. That's exactly right. So because when, next, when we're all equal, the world is a happier place. Of course, we're you know? we all exist. We're we meant to, to partner together to make each other stronger. Yeah. We so, are. what's the next SDG you you think the classroom uh, addresses, Julia? Number three, which is well-being. So these last two, three and ten, I have is kind of indirect. Okay. Because when people um, become entrepreneurs, when they start to be successful in their business and they have money, they suddenly can uh, get the medicine they need. They can get the treatments they need. They're a lot happier. They have more time to socialize. They have time to spend with their family and provide things for their family. So their well-being increases. That's interesting. And their access yeah. to medical care increases when they have money. Mm hmm so yep. I thought indirectly we we affect we are in alignment with that goal. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was uh, goal number ten. I want to look up and see exactly how they define it, but I have it as uh, reduced inequality. Yeah, that's how I have it too. Yeah, reduced inequality within and among countries. So when we help people, like like when we look at what Albert Nasson, who's a mentor in our classroom, mm -hmm. has a, an entrepreneurship for teens program in Nairobi, Kenya. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he's bringing Great equality. He, it's a fabulous program. He started out with these young people who were musicians. Yeah. And then taught them entrepreneurship skills on how to take charge of their careers and build that into a business. And now they're being successful and getting global attention. And that's going to lift the whole country. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because that's the thing. It's not just men and women. We need to start giving our youth a bigger voice. Because that's right. They're the ones who've come into the planet most recently. They're the ones with the most open minds, the most powerful ideas informed by their generation. And it's that's always the next generation that's creating our reality on the planet. There are a lot of old curmudgeons who say, I don't want, I don't like what those kids are saying. We should not be doing that. Guess what? Yeah. Throughout the entirety of history, life is created, everything is created by the younger generation. So just that's, keep on board. That's exactly right. And Amy, you may not be aware of this, but in the United States, 50% of the population is under 39. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And we're fortunate so, because that's not the case in most of the world. That's right. I mean, in the U.S., we have much longer lifespans. In in developed countries, we have longer lifespans. So, yeah, That's it. use yeah. your lifespan. Right. So, empowering young people is so important. Yeah. Because they they're the they're not the coming generation. They are the current generation. Absolutely. And when you look at what's happening politically in the United States, the young people are driving the arguments and, and the things that are important. It's the young people. Yeah, exactly. So that's why it's so important. So did you have some goals? You had I some do, goals? I do, I do. I've got some more goals and I'm checking the comments. So um, let's see, Salman, thank you for giving him that link. Uh, Hasna Magadorian. I'm sorry, I probably butchered that. Uh, he, uh, he or she, I don't know, because there's no photo, uh, is a Moroccan currently living in the Illinois, uh, in Illinois, in the Illinois, in <laughs> Illinois. Oh, my. <laughs> I think I needed to drink more coffee this morning or something. <laughs> Illinois is a state in my country. <laughs> uh, and... There are just so many great people here. Michael Cillion is here. Yay. Hi, Michael. Yay. Captain Future. Uh, yes, Captain Future. He's always thinking about the future. And Nasser Munir and Rafia Mudasir is here. Hello, guys. Um, Saeed says again, uh, 
mean, he, I think he's continuing an earlier conversation. There's so many comments. Uh, always think positive and everything will be right. I actually agree with that. I mean, it's okay to be angry and frustrated and upset about something, but make sure you tune yourself back to believing that things are going to get better and keep your mindset wired for positive thought because you need it to fuel everything you're going to build and face all the challenges you are inevitably going to face on the way. It's just life. That's, that's nope. right. But also, also there's this thing called the ripple effect. So if you are positive, just positively impacting your own life and not even looking at anybody else's, just your own life and keeping positive energy around you, that will create a ripple effect. And that without you doing anything else, it will automatically affect people around you, which will then affect people around them. And it just keeps growing. Yeah. Uh, to the person, um, Moshin Iqbal says, can you scroll? I can't scroll up, my friend. Just write your comment again at the bottom. I'll look for it. I'll remember your name. Uh, I can scroll up, but there's too many comments and notifications. And you know yeah. what, Julia, I'm going to pop off screen for one minute and, and let this little noisemaker in the room. So it's, okay. it's your show. There you go. Okay. So you never did say though what the other goals were, but when you come back, I, we'll get yeah. to that. And uh, okay. So um, I'm looking at on the uh, United Nations sustainable development, it's, it's sustainable development.un.org. I tried to post a link, but it, it didn't work. But they have a little circle here. And if you click on the number, it'll come up with the definition. So, uh, goal, so we said there were 17 goals. And goal number 17 is to strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. And in and of itself, I think the classroom is doing that. You know, we didn't plan it that way, but I think all of us working here together are are contributing to these goals in our own way. And so we're kind of, what's the word I want? Encompassing, we're like living goal number 17. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're the living embodiment of that with the partnerships and all. Right. That's what I, I have 17 as well. And the summary that I have is just partnerships for the goals. And yeah. you're absolutely right. This classroom was just kind of, it, it organically birthed itself. Yeah. And it is a partnership, a gathering, a volunteer gathering of 14 different people from different corners of the world, almost all of whom have never met each other, with the exception of Jan and Arthi, because they're partners, they live together, work together as well. And me and Darren Strong, we grew up together. <laughs> Otherwise, nobody else has met in person. And it, right. Julia and I have spent hours on the phone talking, and the same with me and Alex and everybody else. These are friendships. These are partnerships that have formed over the okay. internet purely because we are all looking at life in the same direction, and we all value doing what the classroom asks people to do. Right. And we're growing through networking. Yes, exactly. We're growing through networking. I can't stress how important networking is. So if no. you don't have networking skills, learn them. Yes. Right. And Amy, the thing that brought me into your classroom is that you and I pretty much have the same mission. Yeah. Which is to get quality entrepreneurship education out to as many people in the world as possible. Mm hmm. That was my, that's my mission. That was your mission. Because I truly believe that when we empower people with entrepreneurship skills, it is going to change the course of the planet. Oh, totally agree. It's going to affect economies worldwide and just make things better. Mm -hmm. I, I have a few goals and that is, that's, that's kind of the deliverable part of my goal. The other goal that I have is what I call uncommon collaboratives. So it's kind of looking at networking. So if I just do a lesson on here and Alex and I have talked about networking, there's the nuts and bolts of it, how to do it. And Alex is really focused on getting people to understand how to not do it. So <laughs> knowing how to do it, you really, you know, it's, it's a whole process, it's a strategy, but it's also a certain level of faith that you will meet the people you're meant to meet. That's right. And when I look at that, 
I have to create some structure around it. And I call it uncommon collaboratives, which was a fantastic phrase that that a supporter of mine from years and years and years ago, 12, 2006. So when was that? 13 years ago. Yeah. Um, he was he's since retired, but he was the one of the founders of Staples Corporate Corporation. And he was the long, long, long term, uh, one of the vice presidents of Staples. And he got my work. He got my vision, getting young people into internships, getting them building networks, getting them learning entrepreneurship, getting them mentors, all of that. And he and I worked together to strategize, like, how do we package this and how do we do this by bringing in um how do we bring in corporate partners and community partners and university partners to kind of wrap around that vision, that mission? And um, he he said that he had, I think he was on an advisory board for another organization, and this was the phrase that they use. And I just love it. Uncommon collaboratives means groups of people who would not come together otherwise, come together around a shared goal a shared vision which is exactly what's happened yep. in this classroom that's right that's kind of a long way of saying that's the other side of my vision and my purpose and my work is the uncommon collaborative piece it's not just teaching entrepreneurship um so it, both of these goals that we've or all of the goals that you've talked about julia and then i'm going to give the list of of what i want to add to this okay um, great I think Alex just, yep, Alex Banhammer. Alex just <laughs> hashtagged the Banhammer. Yeah, you should come back and keep talking about this because people need to understand it. You know, and I'll just say um, one of the things I've learned with this classroom, because it's not a typical classroom. We're not delivering, you know, here are the 15 lessons you need to know, and then boom, they're done. We've recorded them all. What right. we do week after week, and we're not here every single week because we're people with lives and we don't have the flexibility always. But stay tuned and look in the classroom to see when's the next time Julie is going to be live, the next time I'm going to be live. Um, one of the purposes of this classroom is for us to come back and talk more about the thing that we know really well. So if you saw our lesson last month and it's another lesson on networking, you should still come back and watch it because there's new insight that your mentor has. There are new discussions that are going to happen between you in the form of your comments during the live broadcast and that mentor. And everything is born from conversation. That's right reality it, nothing you don't just sit in a cave anymore by yourself and come up with brilliant ideas and come out and write about them and, and that just becomes the solution to all the problems in the world everything is born from the uncommon collaboration sometimes the right. collaborations yeah yeah um so i want i want alex to come back and talk more about the band hammer yeah <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And people need to know what not to do when you're networking. Exactly. You know? that, that's what Alex and I talk about. That's the nuts and bolts that Alex and I have talked about. And yeah. Alex and I need to do that again. And Alex, if you haven't already, please, um, please, please make sure that you and I have a, a broadcast coming up soon together, just like me and Julia today. Um, yeah. I, I, someone's on top of scheduling all of those, which, oh my gosh, thank you, Saman, you're amazing. Now, uh, I want to look at these comments here. Okay. So, uh, Motion asked me to look at something. So, I'm looking at his name again. He says, I'm working as R&D engineer, but I'm not happy with my job. I want to set up my own business but my family is insisting to do the job and have the experience to move. I'm assuming he's meaning to another country. Um, what should I do? Follow my instincts or let them flounder by the voices of my surrounding folks? Oh my, we could have an entire lesson just on this. I have to tell you, that's a very complex question you've asked, but you have to follow your gut and your instincts always but if you have a family relying on you to support them, 
um, you have to figure out, create a plan, a strategy to make sure you're supporting your family. But you will find in life that you have to say no to the other people if you know in your gut and in your heart that what you need to do next is the right decision for your family. So I hope that answers your question. I hope you will post the question in the classroom so we can all talk about it. We can we can all answer this because this is, I don't know a single person who hasn't had to deal with something like this. I really don't. No, so, this, is, this is so common. And, you know, I had this my whole life. And had had I followed my heart and my instincts in the first place, I would have been an entrepreneur a lot sooner. And I would have been a lot happier through throughout yeah. most of my life, right? But I listened to people that said, no, you can't take that. You have to have a job. You have you have to pay the rent. You have to do that. And that's like living in fear. It is living in fear. Yeah. It's living in fear. And I gave into that for a really long time. And when I decided to become an entrepreneur, I didn't tell anybody. I just did it quietly yep. on the side and then suddenly it was like what are you doing you know you're oh and then i stopped working so it's like oh well you're not working you got to get a job no i don't need a job thanks mm -hmm. and and from that point on i started following my heart but i wish i had had the courage to do that sooner uh oh we lost julia no you didn't can you guys still can you see me please write in the comments if you can still see me i can see uh, you hopefully uh, julia will hop back in here so I I'm going to put you. just me on the screen until she comes back. I'm here. So, all right. So we're talking about the UN Sustainable Development Goals and how entrepreneurship is just a key core part of delivering those goals. Um, I'm, I'm looking at my phone to see. It looks like Julia is still on my screen, but there's always a delay with Facebook broadcasting. So please... I can see, you can still see Julia, guys. I'm I don't here. see Julia. Julia's not on my screen at all. I'm here. So you can't hear me. I'm not sure what's going on here. You still see us both. No, Julia's gone. I think, I think it's the delay. Not now. Okay. You, so you can see me, but you can't see Julia. Julia's, oh, she's back. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hi, Julia. Hey, I guess I had to log out and come back. I could see you and hear you the whole time. Oh, you could? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm I, going, I see you. <laughs> I couldn't see you and I couldn't hear you. Okay, well, we're back. So I just okay. had to log off and come back. Good. That, okay. Yeah, that was weird. Sometimes you just need to refresh your browser or something. Okay. okay. And then I wanted to add one thing about, um, you know, following your gut. So if your family is kind of, they're also coming out of fear, mm -hmm. fear of the future and fear that you might fail. So you need to find a way to enroll them in your idea and bring them in. Yes. I love right? and, mm -hmm. and that if you can enroll them in your idea and what you want to do, and maybe if you show them that you have a plan mm -hmm. and this is what I'm going to do and this is what I'm going to attempt and I'm going to give it this amount of time. And if it doesn't work, then I'll go back and get a job and then I'll I'll get steady again and then try again later. Yeah. So if you can tell them yeah. something like that. Exactly. And sometimes yeah. you can you can engage them in what you're building. If you exactly. look at your family, you might have people who have certain skills that you don't have. Or you might have someone who can help you with documentation or running your social media or uh, creating marketing materials, anything like that, or running your budget. If you hate running your budget, there's someone That's in your right. family who can do that. Engage them and say, look, here's my plan. Here's how That's you right. can. Yeah. That's right. And, and I promise you, people like being part of something, feeling like they're building something. That's right. Most people don't want to be the one to start. So if you're the one to start, in, invite your family to be yeah. part of it so that they have a, a level of comfort with what you're doing. Right. And if they don't, if they don't want to be a part of it or they don't feel they have skills, at least have regular meetings with them and inform them of what you're doing and what's going on so that they can feel good about supporting you in, in going ahead and doing that. But if you can present them with a plan 
you know, that's where a good business plan comes in. Show them that you've really looked at this, you've really considered it, you've got an idea of what direction you're going in, and it would be hard for them to say they don't support it. Yes, exactly. So I see lots of comments. Yes, guys, I took her off screen because on my computer, she was just gone. Um, <laughs> but I apparently, you all still saw her and heard her. So forgive me for taking her off screen, but we're both back. Um, <laughs> And there was one, there was a question. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to find it. So Amjad Nawaz Raja says, it's a question for you, Julia. He says, ma'am, Julia, uh, what do you mean by quality education? Does quality education mean the basic skillful education or the high quality education like Finland has, um, which not... I think he means which not only enlightens but empowers the community. So, Julia, hold that question for a minute because before yeah. you answer it, this is huge. Yeah. And what I want to say, I want to list the other sustainable development goals that I think our work addresses. Okay. Um, so, you and I both listed one, no poverty, two, quality education, or I'm sorry, four, quality education, eight, decent work and economic growth. Um, I add to that list number nine. And number nine is, hold on, I need to set this up. Number nine is industry innovation and infrastructure. So the nature of becoming an entrepreneur, whether you do it on a large scale with you know a, a $900 million budget, or you do it on a small local scale, just you selling your products um, to local shops, that is industry and innovation, okay? Mm -hmm. So number nine, I also add, um, Julia and I talked about number 10, which is reduced inequalities. Um, I also listed number 11, because oh. number 11 is sustainable cities and communities. And I see what we're doing. If everybody in our classroom watches Julia's lessons and goes out and builds uh, something that doesn't exist, we are helping you to build sustainable city and community where you live. And by extension, I add to that sustainable communities because there's so many communities now online, just like our classrooms. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I know here in Los Angeles, they're working on that goal in particular. They're, they're experimenting with things. And so far what they've done hasn't really worked because they tried to take a major traffic street and put a bike lane in. And that prevented people from parking in front of small businesses that was hurting the businesses. So it didn't work. But you know, unless you experiment, unless you get out there and try things, you don't know what's gonna work or not, right? So you have to not be afraid to try different things. Exactly. Um, so Julie and I also, we agreed on number 17, which is partnerships for the goals. We talked about yeah. the classroom being an example. I add number 16 peace, justice, and strong institutions. Again, oh, because if we are teaching you how innovation can address the problems that exist in the world, one of the problems is a lack of peace. That's so no matter right. what it is, every country around the world has people on both sides or three sides of, of a political issue. And we have a major problem on this planet with war and hatred and warring ideas and ideals That's for the future right. and we need to come together i mean i'm going to use our country julia the united states as an example uh, enough with the us versus them uh in terms of republicans democrats we're all american citizens we need to come together obviously to fix and rebuild our country we can't do it if if we're like oil and water and we can just never work together that's so, right. And it's incumbent on us as individuals to make that change because the people in power are all about retaining their power. Mm -hmm. And so they're not going to be our friend and they're not going to help us make these things happen. We have to stand up and say, we're not going to take it anymore and you will make this change or you will be gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm looking again at the comments. Uh, and Brandon, so Julia, have I, do you, have you connected with Brandon? Uh, mm -hmm. back? No. Okay. Brandon, I know you're actually on my calendar for 4 PM today, my friend, uh, to dig into what you sent me. Um, 
I want to connect you and Julia because Brandon is in uh, Texas doing something very similar to what you and I are doing and what we care about. Uh, right. And he's he's doing it in a way that's also engaging, like I was saying in the beginning of the call, the uncommon collaboratives that I care so much about. So um, okay. there's more to it, Julia. This is the thing. Oh my gosh, there's so many people I want to work with. There's so many people I want to connect, and there's only one of me. And thank God for Salman Zahid. I just have to say it again. <laughs> Makes more things happen than you guys even know. Um, so Brandon says, I'll need to catch up on this one, Amy. Sustainable community ecosystems is a big one. Yeah. Um, okay. And Brandon, uh, once I get through the rest of what I need to look at for your stuff today, I'm going to schedule a call with you. And I think what makes sense rather than then scheduling another call because my my calendar is ridiculous. <laughs> um, I think maybe we'll do a three way with Julia. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Awesome. So, Brandon, great to see you here. I'm really glad you're here. Um, so the i added in my last uh, sdg that i think the classroom stands for and that was the purpose of our conversation today um me and julia and we've got about 10 minutes left so i want to make sure we address your questions and your thoughts so i'm going to go through and read a, a few more comments julia and i know i asked you to address that one about what are what is quality education that's a huge question. See, that's the thing. We could have a broadcast for every single one of these. So why don't why don't you address that now? Why don't you answer Nadim's question? I think it was Nadim. Okay, so to me, it's it's actually simple. So a quality education is providing the student what they need in a yeah. way that they can go out in the world and use it. Okay. That's a quality education. That that's not a it's that's a simple answer to a really complex question yes because you know i know that they want the professionals all want measurements and you have to measure the, you know what the shooting bets and what they're you know that's all crazy if i can give you something that you can take out into the world and use you have just gotten a quality education right right yeah. that, that's what i love about this classroom is we don't we don't have measurements we just give you the best of what we have. And sometimes it isn't even that. A lot of times I will take a class or participate in somebody else's workshop or whatever, and then make notes and bring them back and share them. I'm not the expert on that. And I always say, I'm not the expert on this. I learned yeah. this this weekend and I want to share it with you. But I, I want to jump in here and say, you synthesize that information. And because we know you, we trust you, we know your background, your expertise, okay. we want your synthesized perception right. of what you've gathered because you think it's going to be valuable to people. That's right. And I love that you said what you said. And, and this is what I'm trying to, what was, what was your word today? Incumbent? Incumbent. I, I, no, it's not going to work for what I want to say. Okay. I'm trying to gather exactly what you're talking about. The education systems globally are so outdated because right. they're, they're stuck in hierarchical, hierarchical yeah. systems That's that are right. all focused on measurement and making sure everything is exact, exact, exact. And the new way of learning if we just think about self-directed learning that young people do, they go to YouTube to learn whatever they want to learn, and then they take what they need from it and they go out and do what they want to do. This is the future of learning, but education systems and governments, they're, they don't even, they laugh at that. They think that's ridiculous, yeah. but that is the future of learning. And that's why yeah. we're seeing every government, every education system just completely fall apart. And that's because old fashioned education systems are about control. When you look at when you look at education and the history of school in the, in the United States, it was all about teaching people to be good workers. Yeah, that's yeah. what our public education school was, and they're still kind of stuck in that. Even though a lot of those jobs that was during the Industrial Revolution in this country, they taught you how to respect authority, how to say yes sir, no sir, how to follow orders, how to be on time, yeah. all the things that those industries wanted in good workers. That's why they set up public school system here in this country. And that no longer exists. And they're still stuck in that way of thinking. And, and until yeah. that passes, education is going to continue to go down the tubes in this country. 
Yes. And, and like the biggest problem of all of this is that there's an assumption that the 25 people in this classroom taking this content, and I'm going to include even, even, you know, Finland's content, whatever it may be. And Finland is amazing because they're outside of the box. Yeah. And I, I feel like they're part of, of the transition to the future of education. But if 25 students are sitting in a classroom getting the greatest content in the world, the greatest curriculum, you have no idea out of those 25 kids, there might be one or five who totally resonate with that teacher's teaching style, that content. But are you saying that it's not quality education if the other 15 or 20 or 24 they don't resonate with it because it's not what they're here to do. It's not why they're on the planet. That's so right. It's so interesting that you brought that up because when I was in middle school, so I was I, 13, I was 12, I think, and a brand new school, uh, President Kennedy, John Kennedy was president at the time, mm -hmm. and he wanted to change the educational system in this country. He saw the ridiculousness of of what was being taught mm -hmm. and how it was being taught. So I went to school called Nova and it's still there today. And it's a call, they go from kindergarten to college. Mm -hmm. And Nova was the kind of thing where you went to a class with a teacher, You there were no grades, there were no, no grades, no pass or fail. I was in English, I was like an eighth grader in an English class and, and other kinds of academic classes with 10th graders. Mm -hmm. Math, I was with the eighth graders. <laughs> I wasn't that great with math. But they put you, whatever your skill level was, they put you with a teacher who taught at that skill level. And if you didn't get it, you didn't fail. It just means you didn't resonate with the way it was being taught. They put you in another classroom with a different teacher who taught in a different way right. until you found something you clicked with. That's right. quality education. Yeah. Because that's giving a student what they need. We all learn in different ways. Right. And that's what I love about what Layla teaches, because Layla talks about different learning modalities. Yep. And we all learn in different ways. And so if I can reach you in where you learn, right. you just got quality education. Let me let me use a really kind of radical and funny example of this, okay? Okay. Um, Harvard University School of Medicine. Right. How many Harvard educated doctors are there in our country and probably around the world? Arguably one of the top medical schools. OK. If I were to go sit in those classes at Harvard, it's not a quality education for me. I don't care about about learning medicine. It, it's not something I can synthesize. No, right. I can't memorize things. There's no way I could cut open a cadaver. There's no way I'm even interested. I'm interested in the body, but for different reasons. So right. that 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 is Harvard University delivering, failing at delivering me a quality education. Okay, because I'm not supposed to be there. The people who are supposed to be there, that's a quality education for them. And that's how I want the world to think about education. Harvard failed me with every single one of those med school courses. In, in, in my theoretical example here. So you can't say Harvard Med School is a failure. You can't say Amy Carrier is a failure. It's not a match. The right. content, the teaching style, it's just not a match. That's why, and this is what Julia said, and I'm just reemphasizing, that's why this classroom works because we let you direct your own learning. That's right. So let me look at the, so Nadim wrote back, uh, yes, a quality education is one that provides all learners with the capabilities they require to become economically productive, develop sustainable livelihoods, contribute to peaceful and democratic societies, and enhance individual well-being. That's yeah, a yeah. summary, Nadim. That's great. Yeah. Um, Nasser says uh, his opinion is, Quality education enlightens and empowers citizens and enables them to contribute to the maximum extent possible to the social and economic development of their communities. I think that's a great a great explanation as well. I think that's terrific. And I think that um, this just speaks to the fact that we all need to redefine what we look at as quality education. Because, you know, I, I had to, um, 
I took my car in for a repair recently and the guy said to me, I think you might have a leak in the transmission line. You need to check the fluid pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do that. So I went on YouTube, I Googled and searched on YouTube for how do you change the transmission or how do you add transmission fluid? And they gave me a video and I went out and did it. It was like, that's quality education. It taught me something I needed to know. You don't need to know how to do that to the extent that a mechanic needs to That's know. That's right. That's right. And you don't need to memorize it. You just That's need right. to know it right now for this purpose. That is the future of education. What do I need That's to know right now? Can I teach myself? Can I go to sources that are that are reliable? And then can I move to the next thing that I need to do in my life? That's right. So to summarize that, quality education is something that teaches you things that are relevant to your current life. Yes, exactly. Or to your current needs. Yep. Exactly. So once we start looking at that as quality education, we can really start taking advantage of that and, and more people can feel good about what they're learning. Yeah. So uh, Brandon has another comment here. He says, this is what we witnessed while running our student housing business. So many students were in college that did not want to be there and should not have been in college. Yeah. Uh, they were not getting quality education. And right. that's exactly what we're talking about. That's so right. And, and in the new in the new uh, economy, in the new, what do I want to call it, the new work environment that we have, the new jobs that are coming up, Mm -hmm. skills are more important than a college education. Totally. You know, if there's something that you really want to learn, you can learn it. You just Google it and it's there. You can get whatever knowledge you want through Google or through other, other people's websites or whatever. But you need to learn what you need to learn to move forward in the world. What interests you? What, what's in your heart? You know, what's going to make you happy? That's what you want to pursue. And a college education and the prices you have to pay to learn things that you have no interest in. Well, what's the point? I don't see the point in that. You know, I am college educated. You are, like we are college educated. And if I had to go back and do it over, I would do things differently. Yeah. I would, because I was forced to take a lot of classes I had no interest in. And, and you lose four years of your life. I think that's that's, right. that's, that's to me, exhausting. Thinking right. about sending our 18-year-old children into an institution that is saying, we are planning for you to take four years to learn this. But what they start, again, let's it's just the education system. Everything it's teaching is outdated by the time that child leaves that class. That's right. Four years before you have a piece of paper that says you're ready to go do that thing? No. 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 And yeah, there are innovative models that are now doing it much more quickly. And I love Germany for this because Germany's saying, you don't, you don't, you don't need spring break. You don't need like three hours off between classes. That's let's right. just give you the information that we need to give you or that you want. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. In today's world, skills are more important. Right. No, so you, can are, be, you can be uh, an entrepreneur. You can start a global business just by logging onto the internet. Right. Right. So we do not need right, to go to school for that. We are right up on the hour, so I have to wrap this up. Oh my gosh, this was such a good conversation. We could have gone on longer. It went into the future of education, which shocker that Julie and I want to talk about that, that we want to talk about this connected to the classroom. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who joined us today and participated in this conversation. I loved all your comments. And I just want to say, please, if you have not already, join Amy Carrier's Classroom. It's this virtual learning community on Facebook. You can go to amycarriersclassroom.com. You can just search for it. Click on, I'm broadcasting on my personal profile today. If you go to my personal profile, there's a link for my classroom. You will not miss it. And there are uh, hundreds of videos there that you can watch if you want to yeah. go back and watch them again. And like I said in the beginning, someone is actually going through and collecting all of the series. So thank you all for being here. Make sure you join the classroom. Make sure you ask questions. Just hit the post button in the cl- in the classroom. And you guys had such amazing comments today. Yeah, Let us have more of a conversation 
um, by putting our comments beneath your questions. So please go do that. I really hope that some of you who who wrote these amazing comments will just copy and paste over there and say, this yeah, is you know, I just want to add that this is a quality education when you can yeah. ask a question and and we can address what it is you want to know. You're yeah. getting quality education. And so multiple create people are giving you multiple different perspectives in response that's to your question. That's the right. of life. You that's exactly right. different people. And you you can them. take from all those replies, you can take what it is you need. Yeah. That's yeah. really education is a participatory yep. uh, thing. You have to participate in it. And if you ask questions, you get answers, then you take from those all the answers you're getting are good. Yeah. But you as an individual have to take the answer that resonates with you That's and right. then go out in the world and use that to your benefit. Yeah. That's quality education. It's what you would do if you didn't have access to a school, but you had access to the Internet. It's what you would do. Exactly. So on that note, thank you all for all your amazing comments. And they're still coming. So, Julia, there's lots of stuff to respond to. And okay. make sure you tune in tomorrow for Julia's live lesson, free live lesson for your quality education. That's um, right. Tomorrow That's at 3 p.m., she's going to talk to you about tapping into that inner, that game of inner wealth, right? Do you want to get right. that? You can go out and create a successful business and earn money, but if you don't know what to do with that money once you get it, then it's just going to be gone. Right. So we're talking about building a sustainable business where you can grow that wealth and make it work for you. But you have to become the person who can do that. Right. OK, yeah. so here are your takeaways. Uh, you what you guys really, 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 I recommend that you do join Amy Carrier's classroom. I invite you to go to my YouTube channel, which is Amy Carrier Empowers. Subscribe. And you will find well over 100 live less, uh, recordings of live lessons that I've done and compilations of things that I've done. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Julia, for taking the time and coming in during my weekly time. Um, my pleasure. To Nadim and Brandon and Michael Cillian and everybody who's joined us today. You guys are amazing. We look forward to seeing you all the time in the classroom. Please just chat with us, okay? So yeah, for now, you thank you very much. Love you all. See you Bye. next week. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Julia. This Bye. Was Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.